Yeah, it's, and a lot of the time with these clinical trials as well, <clears throat> you know, a lot of the time there are patients that would have not had the treatment had it not mm. been for the, the trial. I think about this this ethos push study that we're, yeah. we're most of our hospitals are in right now. And this is a, a study um, of hemangiosarcoma, which is a uniformly lethal disease in, in our canine patients. And so, you know, basically the study affords the owners the opportunity to, you know, number one, possibly have a surgery that they wouldn't have chosen to have due to cost and embark upon chemotherapy really mm -hmm. all you know, sponsored by the study that they yeah. probably wouldn't have done. And so, you know, they're really good opportunities when those studies exist and you're not necessarily, it's not like you're doing trials of drugs, as you said, that are unsafe or unproven. It's does this yeah. protocol compare to this protocol favorably, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. I, I could probably talk about the push study for hours. <laughs> if you ask me, but it's it's well i couldn't the, have not brought it up because it's like yeah. constant emails that they it's, send us about it it's one of those things that um very rarely in your career do you get to participate in something that is like as groundbreaking and as uh something that is going to forever affect the clinical practice of veterinary medicine as this push study is and um, it's so exciting because it, it's a fully funded 400 dog study, and and that is absolutely unheard of mm -hmm. anywhere yeah. else outside of Ethos, where, where they've they've made this investment to provide care for 400 dogs, which again, it, it, you just don't see that in veterinary medicine, and um, it's so incredible that we'll be able to provide the gold standard care and then prove what is the most effective drug for such a debilita debilitating disease, like you mentioned. Um, again, hemangiosarcoma, it's a disease of blood vessels in dogs. And it is, it's something that I've, I've started doing research in vet school. I did some research in residency and now in clinical practice because it's such a devastating disease for the patients and for the clients that we, we've not really made a big jump in their overall survival for years to decades even. And, and this clinical trial is, again, it's using drugs that we know are safe in dogs right. and it's providing those drugs for, for essentially free for these clients to be able to get that chemotherapy medication to see what we can do to actually improve the overall survival. Um, and I think that one of the big things now that we're talking about with chemotherapy is also such a, a terrifying thing to consider for a, a client to put their pet through. And that's that's really based off of what we know or the the connotations that it gets from humans that are undergoing chemo, where if you have a friend and everyone has a friend that's right. undergone chemo or everyone knows someone that has undergone chemo and it's horrible. It's something that in human oncology, those those patients, those people are are often not having a very good quality of life during therapy. And one of the biggest things or one of the biggest changes in veteran medicine is that we don't accept those side effects. So as a, a person that deals with oncology patients, we want their quality of life during treatment to be just as good during therapy as it was before. So we really accept almost no side effects from patients that are undergoing chemotherapy, meaning that fewer than 20% of all of our patients that are getting chemo are gonna have any kind of side effect. And even if we do notice a side effect, it's, it's very important for that to be communicated because often we'll change either the dose of the drug or the actual drug itself to again, make sure that those pets are having just as good of a quality of life during treatment as they were before. Um, and again, getting back to the PUSH study, this is something where we have the ability now to undergo surgery, to be able to provide some benefit to get those patients to have the life-saving surgery that they need. But then after the fact, we can, we can through this clinical trial, actually perform um, better than gold standard care for right. these patients because we can not only provide the chemotherapy, we're providing specific abilities to follow up and recheck those patients. Um, and it's done in such a controlled fashion that we know that we are getting those pets um, truly vital care that is going to maintain their quality of life, improve the time that we have with them, and really define what is most important and most beneficial to the patients that unfortunately have been diagnosed with this disease. Yeah, it's a super exciting study. I agree with you. And, you know, talking again about the human medicine overlap, I mean, this is a very similar type of cancer as angiosarcoma mm -hmm. in humans. So, yeah. you know, looking at the data and looking at, you know, what sort of works, I think is just fascinating what's going to end up coming out of the study. Yeah. And the, the exciting thing about the the translational ability of this particular research is that 
Um, hemangial sarcoma is very unfortunately common in dogs, meaning that nice. for any dog that gets a internal bleeding, they have about a anywhere from a 50 to 60 percent chance of having this particular cancer. Um, on the flip side, it's a very rare disease right. in humans, meaning that it's very uncommon for a human to be diagnosed with this particular disease, but it's still just as devastating for humans. And so it's very challenging on the human side to actually be able to do a prospective clinical research to decide what is actually effective for humans that are getting this diagnosis. Whereas we're seeing so many dogs with this particular disease, we can do something like the PUSH study where we can get 400 patients enrolled in a matter of, let's say, one to two years and follow them for the, the life cycle of the disease. Whereas in humans, because it's so rare, it's almost impossible to be able to do a randomized prospective trial on what is actually effective for those people. So we actually, we, we have the ability to again, give our patients truly a, a treatment that would be unheard of outside of the clinical trial, um, and then take that information and data and say, this is going to improve the, the life of humans that have been diagnosed with this devastating disease at a way that even on, on human healthcare research, they can't actually do. So it's, again, it's, it's so exciting to, to see this and be a part of this and, and exciting to see what the results will tell us. Mm -hmm.